Hey, everybody. It's here. The first session of the account double, any trouble. Welcome to the online presentation, the business and accounting. Thank you for listening and watching today's session. My name is Amy and I'm going to accompany you in today's online session created by AccountingEelEarning.com. So thank you. Let's start. I've divided my presentation into three parts. They are Business Operations Business Organizations Accounting Assumptions Today you learn how to describe profit, risk-taking and entrepreneurs, how to describe service, merchandising, and manufacturing businesses. You will compare the sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporate forms of business. You will learn how to describe the purpose of accounting. You find out how to explain financial and management accounting. And finally how to describe three basic accounting assumptions. Let's start with business operations and accounting. Business All businesses need information that is generated by accounting systems in the form of reports. You will learn about the different types of accounting and accounting reports. Now I'd like to move on to purpose of a business. Tom Phillips loved to play basketball. He also wanted to start his own business. One day he had an inspiration that put both ideas together, t-shirts for casual players like himself, not for players on a team. Six years after Tom had this idea, he is president of a successful company, Tom's Wire, with sales, last year of $15 million. How does a business get started and, once started, how does it succeed? Generally, a business is formed to provide goods or services for the purpose of making a profit for its owner or owners. It begins by obtaining financial resources, and that means money. Tom's Ware began as a business with $5,000 of Tom's own money and a $500 loan from his mother. The financial resources to start a business called Capital, come from the owners of the business like Tom. Why buy a t-shirt from Tom, rather than, from the manufacturer? It's all about value. We order clothes from Land's End because the company provides added value to us. Instead of going to the mall to buy our clothes, we may prefer the convenience of mail order delivery. Land's End customers find value in this service. What all businesses have in common is that, they provide their customers with something of value. Organization of business, an enterprise, another name for a business organization with this goal, is called, a for-profit firm. In contrast, a firm that provides goods or services, for the sole purpose of helping people instead of making a profit is called, a not-for-profit organization. A not-for-profit organization is more likely to be called an organization or agency than a business. Even though it is called not-for-profit, this type of organization does not mind making a profit. The difference is that a not-for-profit organization uses any profit to provide more goods and services to the people it serves rather than distributing profits to its owners. Both for-profit organizations and not-for-profit organizations provide value. Throughout this session, we will be dealing primarily with for-profit organizations' businesses. To be a viable business, Tom's Ware needed to provide customers with something of value. Tom purchased t-shirts with his special logo and then provided them to his customers. What is business all about? Large businesses are certainly players in the world of business today. Your neighborhood convenience store, clothing boutique, rental store, and grocer are also important contributors in our free enterprise system. Businesses that spend more money than they earn, operate at a loss. Whatever its size, a business must do two things to survive. It must operate at a profit and it must attract and keep an individual willing to take the risk to run it. In a business many people play different roles in daily operations, planning, and management. Inventors create ideas for new products or services. 
Investors provide money to help businesses get started. Employees supply the labor needed to operate the business. Managers supervise and plan. Now let's move on to role of entrepreneurs. An entrepreneur is a person who transforms ideas for products or services into real-world business. Owning a business can offer flexible schedules, self-direction, and financial gain. Business ownership is not free from risk. If you look at this slide you can see some pros and cons of entrepreneurship. Pros. You are your own boss. You create opportunities for earning money. You create and control your work schedule. You choose the people you serve. You select the people who work with you. You benefit from the rewards of your own hard work. You choose your own work hours. Cons. You probably need to work long hours. You lose the security of steady wages and medical benefits an employer provides. You market your own services or products. You pay for your own operating expenses. You must be motivated and energetic each day. You face the possibility of losing money. Traits of Entrepreneurs Most entrepreneurs share certain behaviors and attitudes. They are motivated self-starters willing to take necessary risks to create profitable and useful businesses. Strong organizational skills, marketing knowledge, and accounting skills are three areas of expertise that contribute to successful business ownership. Next I'd like to take a look at accounting. What is accounting? The purpose of accounting is to provide information that will help you make correct financial decisions. Your accountant's job is to give you the information you need to run your business as efficiently as possible while maximizing profits and keeping costs low. Accounting plays a role in businesses of all sizes. Your kids' lemonade stand, a one-person business, and a multinational corporation, all use the same basic accounting principles. Accounting is legislated, it affects your taxes, even the president plays a role in how accounting affects you. The list goes on and on. Accounting is the language of business. It is the process of recording, classifying, and summarizing economic events through certain documents or financial statements. Like any other language, accounting has its own terms and rules. To understand how to interpret and use the information accounting provides, you must first understand this language. Understanding the basic concepts of accounting is essential to success in business. Accounting and bookkeeping Bookkeeping procedures and bookkeepers record and keep track of the business transactions that are later used to generate financial statements. Most bookkeeping procedures have been systematized, and, in many cases, can be handled by computer programs. Bookkeeping is a very important part of the accounting process, but it is just the beginning. There is currently no certification required to become a bookkeeper in Canada and the United States. Accounting is the process of preparing and analyzing financial statements based on the transactions recorded through the bookkeeping process. Accountants are usually professionals who have completed at least a bachelor's degree in accounting, and often have passed a professional examination, like the Certified Public Accountant Examination the Certified Management Accountant Examination, or the Certified Fraud Auditor Examination. Accounting goes beyond bookkeeping and the recording of economic information, to include the summarizing and reporting of this information to drive decision-making within a business. Who uses accounting information? In the world of business, accounting plays an important role to aid in making critical decisions. The more complex the decision, the more detailed the information must be. Individuals and companies need different kinds of information to make their business decisions. Let's start with you as an individual. Why would you be interested in accounting? Accounting knowledge can help you with investing in the stock market, applying for a home loan, evaluating a potential job, balancing a checkbook, and starting a personal savings plan, among other things. Managers within a business also use accounting information daily to make decisions, although most of these managers are not accountants. 
some of the decisions they might make for which they will use accounting information are marketing which line of goods should the company emphasize production should the company produce its goods at home or open a new plant abroad research and development how much money should be set aside for new product development sales should the company expand the advertising budget and take money away from some other part of the marketing budget without the proper accounting information these types of decisions would be very difficult if not impossible to make bankers continually use accounting information they are in the business of taking care of your money and making money with your money so they absolutely must make good decisions accounting is fundamental to their decision making process now I'd like to move on to types of business operations types of business I'm interested to know what do businesses do and how are they organized our free enterprise system allows an entrepreneur to choose the kind of business to operate as well as its organizational form the operation of a business depends on what the business has been formed to do from that perspective there are four types of businesses service merchandising manufacturing and financial services although most businesses can be classified as one of these four types many large businesses are a combination of two or more service businesses a service company provides a service it does something for you rather than sells something to you services range from activities you cannot see such as the advice provided by lawyers or tax consultants to activities you can see such as house cleaning or car washing during the past two decades our economy has been producing more services than goods Google is an example of a service firm merchandising businesses a merchandising company buys goods adds value to them and then sells them with the added value it does not make the goods and it does not buy them to use instead a merchandising business buys the goods for the purpose of adding its own particular value to them and after adding value sells them to another company or customers there are two types of merchandising companies a wholesale company which buys goods adds value and sells them to other companies a retail company which buys goods adds value and sells them to customers who consume them which is why you will see these customers referred to us as final consumers both wholesale and retail merchandising companies add value to the goods they buy wholesale companies are not familiar to us because we do not buy things from them manufacturing businesses a manufacturing company makes the products it sells manufacturing companies vary in size and complexity making clay pots and vases in a space not larger than a garage is a manufacturing business automobile giants such as Ford and General Motors owned by many thousands of people and employing hundreds of thousands of workers financial business financial services companies do not make tangible products and they do not sell products made by another company they deal in services related to money banks are one kind of financial services company they lend money to borrowers to pay for cars houses and furniture another type of financial services company is an insurance company which provides some financial protection in the case of loss of life or property now let's move on to business organizations and system of accounting that brings us to forms of business organization forms of business to start a business a potential owner must have a sufficient amount of capital and must choose an appropriate form of business organization in accounting capital refers to money used to start up or grow a new business with a few exceptions businesses are organized in one of three basic